Hey, Ruthann. Hey, Troy. Check this great opportunity out for truck drivers. What is it? A huge FedEx contractor is hiring drivers right now. It looks like teams running in 10 states. You know what a FedEx contractor hiring means? It means big money. Big money. And check this out. Not only big money, but the sign-on bonus is very big, up to $10,000. That's that's really big. That's right. And you get a grand of it on your first paycheck. Here's some other things they give you. 2018, a newer tractor trailer with a fridge, inverter, and get this, a microwave. A microwave. Yeah, they threw in the microwave for real. Home every week. That's cool. That's big for teams. Mm-hmm. And 100% paid medical insurance for the employee. That's super. That is super, super. Let's get the phone number. 615 615- 257-1107. That's 615-257-1107. Tell them Talk CDL sent you. And drivers, report back to us. We want to know how great that company is. Thank you. Of what? Man? <laughs> <laughs> I got to edit that laugh. All right. So you do have a pod. I do. All right. And so what is the pod woman talking about? I want to call you pod woman. Pod woman? Pod woman. It kind of sounds like the, you know, the, the, um, it's almost like a body snatchers, the pods. That's what it reminded me. Yeah. Or maybe like some code name for pot dealer, (laughs) but it's a difference. It's pod pot. What is, do you, you, is it my headset that has that noise? What noise? You have a noise? Yeah. In your headset. Mm -hmm. What's the noise sound like? I don't hear a noise. Well, then it's just my headset. What's the noise? It just sounds weird. Make, let's hear what it sounds like. Can you imitate it? No. Just try. No. Try. Nope. You can't. Is it? Hmm. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, that's just you on a normal basis. <laughs> no. So it doesn't, you don't have a noise? No, it kind of sounds like I'm it sound underwater. Like an air horn? Uh-uh. No. Mm-mm. It sounds like you're underwater. Mm-hmm. It's kind of weird. Mm-hmm. That would mean you would be drowning. <laughs> You'd be dead soon. Uh, okay. So what, what is your pod about pod woman? It's about heart attacks. Da, 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 da. Oh, heart attacks. Yes. I was about to start making jokes. Heart attacks are no joke. No. So heart attacks in trucking, I mean, just, is that what it's about? Heart attacks? Yeah. If you have a heart attack and what you need to do to get back on the road. Okay. So what you're trying to... What you're wanting to talk about is the regulations and all the proper procedures that legally they have to do. Is that is that what you have? Basically, yeah. So you have that information or yeah. or do you have just more of advice? No, it's kind of yeah. like both. It's it's a little bit of advice with a little bit of some of the legalities. Okay. And meaning, meaning why I'm doing this is because... There are so many drivers out there that it doesn't matter your age or even your health anymore. Genetics, you're just going to have some issues. And I've spoke to some drivers that, you know, some of them are medically to where they've had a heart attack. And some of them are having a hard time getting back to driving. And I kind of wanted to clear up a little bit of stuff so that the drivers can know this is what I got to look forward to if this ever happens to me. You know, it's funny. Hmm. I actually was talking to a driver earlier. In Tampa, mm-hmm. and he said he had just had a heart attack in February. It's kind of weird that you're really. I'm, I swear to you, it's the truth. And and I told him, I just I just kind of briefly said, you know, you got a you know some things you need to do mm-hmm. to come back into the industry. You can't just you know, especially you know, a lot of drivers will think, okay, I had a heart attack, I'm good to go, boom. Mm-hmm. And then like some of them will come to orientation and then mention it. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then. You know exactly what's going to happen as soon as you show up in orientation. And, I mean, there's a list of medical things you can mention, but you're here to talk about heart attacks. Mainly, you show up in orientation without the proper documentation and the proper approval from that company. You're, You're going to do nothing but make them mad because, first off, you should already know this. Absolutely, 100%. You should know this. And if you go to your doctor... And you say, I need a excuse to get back to work. That already know that already means you knew something. Mm-hmm. And then the doctor of all people, as soon as he knows you're a truck driver under DOT regulations, he should know there's a bunch of stuff that you're going to have to do. In fact, I believe, and I'm sure you've got this information, but there's some things they don't not only have to do to get back in, 
But like every year, every two years, they have things they have to do mm -hmm. to stay compliant right. because of that ticker inside that chest. They just want to make sure you're okay, brother. Go ahead. Well, they said that basically the um, heart attacks are significantly higher among truckers than the national average. And that's because you, drivers sit. They're not generally physically active to bring up their, their cardio. They, you know, we all know you eat unhealthy, you drink unhealthy, you smoke some of them. So you got a lot of things batting against you. Let, let's, let's go back to the first thing you said. That they're not highly active. Right, the sitting. And mm -hmm. you see what a lot of truck drivers don't realize is when you sit, on your rear end, your entire life, especially you dry van drivers. Mm -hmm. Okay, I say you because reefer drivers are they get a little bit more exercise, especially if they're in the where storage houses breaking stuff down. Right. And your flatbedders, they're, they're always going to get yeah, they're tied up in the strap and they're usually doing a little bit well, more. Well, every so many miles, they're supposed to get out and walk around and check their straps. It's the law. It is. Okay, but with a dry van driver, you know, the only law he has now is. He's got to take a 30-minute break somewhere. Well, most of those guys are not going to get out of their truck and go for a walk. Now, let's just stop right there for a second and just say, if tonight when you get done your job, you're just going to lay down and go to sleep, and then you're just going to, all you're going to do is incline your back into the air and sit in the seat and drive, you've done nothing for that heart but literally collected fat. Whether you're skinny or, or, or heavy, I don't really care. I'm saying even thinner people can start collecting fat around their heart yeah. by not doing nothing. Right. It's and literally it's bad. It's just the not doing something is the bad part. That's number one right there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so my advice right away would be get that heart. You know, a heart's the biggest muscle in the body, right? Am I right about that? It, yeah, no, it's, it's your heart and your lungs are, are muscles that kind of act on their own. And they need to be worked. Yeah. It's they have to be they have to be maintained at least stayed healthy. Okay. Well, here's the here's really the deal. You brought it up. The, the one of the main reasons for the higher heart problem rate for amongst truckers is the sitting and doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So, guys and gals, let's be honest. And let's be honest with let's be honest with everybody about you Ruth Ann. A, a lot of times I'll say, "Hey, let's go for a walk." And you go, "Nope." <laughs> nope, no, I don't, I don't know. So I mean, and and but we still do walk. We do yeah. exercise. We, we bike. still exercise. We have bikes. Not we as walk. much as I would want to. But the bottom line with it is, we understand. Okay, I just drove ten hours. What do you want, Troy? You want me to get out of my truck and go for a walk? I just drove five hundred miles. You want me to go exercise now? Yes, that's the answer. Yes, I do. I want you to get off your ass, and I want you to go do thirty. I think it's thirty-two laps around your truck is a mile. Or go walk around the entire parking lot of the truck stop two or three times. You know, listen to your music and walk. And, and not just walk. Don't get out there and pace like, like you're a cripple. But if you walk as though you are a cripple and you're not, you're not helping yourself. Okay? I've even seen crippled people that walk and can pace and get that cardio going. So the bottom line is, whatever it takes, get your heart pumping. And I think, Ruthann, I think it's... You need to get that heart up to a certain level for at least five minutes continuous. Don't don't just walk a couple paces real fast. Get your legs moving. And you know what, guys? If today you can't do five minutes, do two minutes. Right. If you keep adding to it, it's gonna end up increasing. Hey, when I was when I was eighteen, right, I was out of shape. I was a smoker, I chewed tobacco, it was horrible. I went I wanted to start jogging, right? I started jogging. I couldn't even jog a quarter mile. But the next day, I jogged like 10 more feet. I kept adding on 10, 20 feet. Within a year, I was jogging. I was literally jogging like I was up to like two miles, three miles, something like that. Faithfully, every day, uh, four or five days a week. It's all in our mind and our body. And I'm not here to shove anything down anybody's throat. But the, the numbers don't lie, Ruthann. No, they don't. I mean, if you, if you, and it's right. I think it's, um, you have to keep your you have to have your heart rate has to go above a certain level but you know if you're breaking a sweat you're doing well it's when you don't really break any kind of sweat where you're not you don't feel your heart pumping harder and you're not breaking any kind of sweat that's usually when you you probably have to work a little bit harder at it but you know don't overdo it but start small but work yourself to something higher higher and and eventually you'll you'll do really well 
And, and Ruth, and that's actually good advice. Don't push yourself exercising into a heart attack either. No. You know, that can, you know, they actually, they say when you're really in bad shape, you should actually consult your doctor about exercise. But I will guarantee you, every one of your doctors is going to look at people that get knee operations and hip operations now. At what point do they start making them walk? The next day. The, the very the, next the day. The freaking next day. I they, mean, they got, I look at them like, what? They, exactly. Like, these people are like, just had major surgeries. Mm -hmm. And once a doctor, get them in there and get them on their feet now. Right. They want to move in because, of the, the, first of all, everything gets stiff, right? After they do the surgery, everything's stretched and, and pliable more. So that's why they say they want you to start doing that because they don't want it to get stiff. They don't want it to shrink up those ligaments and stuff. They want you to start moving faster because they realize that you heal better when you do move faster. Look, I can testify to one thing. You remember. I was going to say um, uh, that I'm like awesome. <laughs> you can testify that. <clears throat> listen, listen, listen. That look. I'm, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to tell everybody. And I think I've told people this before. You remember when you first met me, I used to unload tractor trailers. Yeah. I was in amazing shape. I was 165 pounds. One of my buddies was like 250 pounds. I could put him on my shoulder and jog around the, the parking lot at the Treadway in Pottsville. It was crazy. People used to look at me, what's up? Skinny dude, run. How's he doing that? And it was because I would, I, I used to work out with the job in New York City, unloading these 100-pound sacks of flour all day on my shoulder, and it really put me in shape. But then... See, I'm not here to brag about that because after I stopped that, I quit smoking and went on the road and pulled a drive in for a while. And what happened? I went from Mr. Buff to Mr. Honestly, 50, 60 pounds later, literally that much. You remember? Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, one day I looked at a picture of, of us on the beach in Texas. And I said to you, what, remember what I said? I said, who's that guy? No, Next to our kids. You didn't say guy. You said, who's that fat guy? Right. I mean, again, I'm not making fun of fat people because I've been, I've been there. I've been like to where I had three chins. You know what I mean? And I'm looking at this guy on, in our picture and I'm going, and you said, babe, that's you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, shut up. And I, I, you don't know. You just don't. Trucking sneaks up on you is my point. It really does. Next thing you know, you're running 10, 12, 14 hours a day. Some of, some of us are running legal. Some of us are running illegal. It, regardless, we're, all we do is sit in that seat, and we're going, and we're going, and we're going, and we're going. And what are we doing? Getting unhealthy. Well, but, and you know how I got unhealthy? I, had, I always had a bag of little mini Snickers on um, my side. I didn't I, know that. Yes, you did. And I always had a giant Coke, one of those big 500-ounce Cokes to my side. I'd have a... What the heck is a 500-ounce Coke? Whatever the biggest damn one is, <laughs> right? right? And, and then I would have, I would have like... I would stop it in the evening and I'd grab a Big Mac fries. I was a Big Mac guy, right? And, you know, the apple pie, blah, blah, blah. And you know what? I did that. You know why? Because I thought it was keeping me awake. Sucking on coffee, sucking on food, chocolate, and I would just constantly eat and drive, eat and drive. And then one day you look at yourself and you realize trucking caught up to you. Trucking will get you. You cannot let trucking get you. You got to get trucking. Go ahead, Ruthann. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. So let's get started on this part. So if you have a heart attack, all right, we, 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 we can't now do the avoidance of it. Now we've got to go from, what do we do from here? This is, you're saying after you've been, after you've gone, after the operation or whatever, after you're, after you've gone unhealthy and stints or whatever was put in. What, well, yeah. I mean, first of all, if you have a heart attack, you can be in the hospital anywhere from a week to several weeks or a couple of days to several weeks. Let's put it that way. Cause depending on, on with your heart attack, I mean, there's serious things that can happen, you know? So like you said, there could be a stint that need to be involved. So there's more things that could be happening other than just that. So, all right. So you're out of the hospital. You're out of the hospital. Before you can return to driving, your cardiologist will need to clear you in writing. So make sure you get it in writing. Make some copies of that, that you're cleared. And the and, and important thing is, because I've talked to trucking companies, what they're not looking for is a cardiologist that wasn't the official tending surgeon. They want the guy that's take like a doctor's excuse. They want the guy that's been medically watching over you. Not somebody you just walked in <laughs> and, and, and made one appointment with. They're wanting that guy. 
Well, the driver, the cardiologist that you, that's seen you in the hospital is the one that you should always follow up with, period, right. because they already seen what your heart looks like. You don't want to go to someone that doesn't really know what it looks like. Okay, so now you need the note from him. Right. You also have to have a satisfactory stress test and a test showing that at least 40% of your left ventricle um, ejection fraction is measured. Uh, that's what shows how well your heart's pumping. I, so I don't even understand. So say that again. 40% of your left ventricle, ventricle ejection fraction. So when that opens up, it's shooting at least 40%. Mm -hmm. My gosh. Yeah, They need to make sure I, that, that it's pumping. I, I hope it's 100%. Well, here's the thing. That's you know, first of all, you're just like, do you ever go and you, you get like a, a Charlie horse or you bruise your muscle and it's so sore? Mm -hmm. Same thing happens with your heart. It's oh, yeah. bruised. You just, you just, you, you totally freaked it out. I mean, so, you know, it's going to be that way. So, so I'm, I'm just a question. So the left ventricle is the one that go, it shoots out is the right that takes it in. Is that mm -hmm. how that works? One Pretty takes much. it in, it one takes it out. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. So, like, okay. So like pumping an udder. So you're, <laughs> <laughs> so 40% of your, of your left ventricle must be pumping uh, correctly. Right. Or your left ventricle must be pumping out at least 40%. Pretty much. Wow, that's cool, and they can measure that. Well, yeah, because what happens is you're, when you're doing your stress test, see, there's many different tests that go along with that. So your stress test is going to see, make sure that your heart rate itself is, is going and that you're not going to have another heart attack. That's what the stress test is for. And then the other test is showing your heart itself and how well it's pumping. So once you do that, then they can, they can um, start going on it. But here's the thing. After you do... After you get the written consult from the um, cardiologist saying, hey, he's all clear, he's good, he's done the proper stuff, he's all set to go. Even though you got that and you got your stress test and you got your LV, LVEF test done, which is for the left ventricle effraction, ejection fraction test. Once you get all that, you have two months that you have to be stagnant in a matter of speaking, before you can go driving again. Because that two months is where you're going to be taking the medications that the cardiologist is going to put you on. You're going to be doing all the tests. You're going to be doing all this different stuff to make sure that your body's accepting that medication that he's going to be putting you on. So from when you have a heart attack, say you have a heart attack and you're in the hospital for a week. Say it's nothing big. It's nothing a major heart attack. It's you know good enough to where you're in there for a week. You still have two more months. So you still have almost almost three months before you can get back into the tractor. So you're saying, and I know what you're saying by like one of those little heart attacks, like people go into the hospital all the time and they, I believe it's, is it their white blood cell or, or there, there's something that they, there's a platelet. Is it the platelets? They look at something and they can tell if you did have a heart attack. Like some guys will go into, many people go into a hospital with chest pains and they run a test and they can tell you, Yes, you did have a slight heart attack. Or no, no, you didn't have a heart attack. It was an anxiety. See, what happens is anxiety and heart has very similar symptoms. So my question then to you is, it sounds like you're saying, well, it sounds like you're reading that if one has what's deemed a heart attack, well, no matter how minor it is, you just got two months off. So Basically. If that, gets, if that gets into the system, because, and I'm going to tell you something, this DOT stuff is getting... More stringent and more stringent. You just seen what happened with the drug screens. They came up with that new clearinghouse where all DOT doctor drug all DOT doctors now will be submitting that stuff into that clearinghouse. So even if your company doesn't put that in the system, everybody's gonna know you failed the drug screen because everybody now that works under the DOT regulations has to report. Well, these way that I'm talking about is from the FMCSA. So that's what what I'm getting at is if you had a slight heart attack and you went to Country Doctor Joe, well, mm. what I'm getting at though is, you know, is it can can somebody hide it? I'm not wanting anybody to hide it. Either way, these guys are gonna have to somehow legally, and if you get caught trying to hide it, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. You know, honestly, if you're gonna try and hide a heart attack, if it's a real small one, like if it's a major one. It, it, you know, you're out of work longer. But here's the thing. If you have a small heart attack and you're still out for two months, what's the first thing a company asks when you don't put something for two to three months on your employment? On your employment? Well, they want to know if you were in jail or something. They want to know what you were doing. Well, how are you going to, oh, I was just loafing around. You know, you, you can't really, for having three months off of work, you really have to figure out how you're going to try and, quote, hide that 
You know what I mean? It would be really difficult. So I got a question. Hmm. Okay. So you're at that point where you're at. You have to have that. You had said, okay, a stress test is needed. Yeah. You have it, to have a stress. Now, isn't there a rule once you've had a heart attack for the rest of your life, every year, every two years, you have to have a stress test also? Yeah. You, you jumped ahead of me. Well, okay. Go ahead. Okay. Otherwise, if you don't get, like if you, when you do the, the mandatory two month waiting period, before you could resume commercial driving. Right. That's so that you could tolerate your medications and you meet the stress test and you meet the LVEF testing. You could be disqualified. So if you don't do that properly, if your doctor is a good doctor, he's going to make sure that you're waiting that. And let's put it this way. Once you go in to do your, um, you know, like into a company and you're doing your physical and they're going to get all the list of the medications that you're on because you have to tell the doctor you're on this. When he sees certain medications, that's medications that are actually given to patients that did have a heart attack. They're going to question you at that point. The guy's going to say, the doctor's going to say, well, why are you on this medicine? So you can't really hide the heart attack because you're... Your well, a lot of gonna... times, they, especially if you had a big scar on your chest. Well, yeah. I've had, we've had drivers do that, yeah. think they're going to hide it. And then when they go to get a physical, the... A DOT doctor now is the only yeah. one that can give you that. He's looking at a scar in your chest going, oh, what's this, a tattoo? Yeah. Yeah. So it's obviously it's a big scar. You know, I wanted to bring something up, but I'll wait till you get to that. Okay. Stress testing. So once you go through that two-month mandatory, then you go to your certified medical examiner for your CDL physical. So once you go through that, you have to go then and get a new physical. Um, once you do that, your certification will only be limited to the one year that you were talking about. So every year you have to pass a stress test at every two years. So every year you have to do your your physical, and every two years you have to go through a stress test. I re- this is what I want to tell you a story of. I remember this one driver, and this was probably 10, 15 years ago. Had this driver, and we were, bring, we were bringing him in. And then, ironically... I don't know how we found out. Oh, I think his last company reported he had been out on medical leave. He had a heart attack. Mm-hmm. So we asked him, hey, you got a heart attack. Do you have your stress test? He says, no, I didn't know I had to have one. Okay. He had had a heart attack a year, year and a half prior. We said, well, what did you do when you had the heart attack? Well, I got some rest. I got better. I didn't. Did you get on medicines? No, I didn't. I didn't want to do doctors and all that other stuff. And we were like, dude, you're going to kill yourself. You had a heart attack. You haven't really been treated since then. And you haven't done a stress test. We said, all we want you to do, go get a stress test, and we're going to hire you. The next day, he went back to his old company because he did not want to get a stress test and he did not want to go to a doctor. Now, you're talking about a guy. He may be dead by now, Mm -hmm. but there's a reason that they're making you guys. In fact, truckers should thank people for that because you got a group of guys. Most guys hate doctors. Most of them. We do. I hate doctors. But if your job depends on you to go there and be healthy, that's a good thing. So you're being made to. You know what I mean? It's at least in that part of it. So. Well, it's not only that. I mean, honestly... One of the reasons why the FCS, FMCSA, I can't get it out today, why they're being more stringent, more strict on, on drivers now is because of the safety risk that you're out there driving and they're trying to stop some of these accidents for those purposes because there are accidents that happen out there from a, a, a driver that's, you know, was diabetic and, and, and it didn't. It didn't come about. It wasn't, it was not detected. And next thing you know, he had a seizure. He had something that happened to him. His blood sugar dropped or, you know, all these different things. You have drivers because of their health risks being a driver, whatever the case might be, they're at risk of having heart attacks. They don't want to see a a person go through that. So they're making it more strict for you. So here's the thing. So once you visit your, 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 your medical examiner for your, your, your physical. Here's the things that you need to make sure you take. Your hospital discharge papers, your clearance from your cardiologist, the stress test report, 
the echocardiogram or a nuclear testing showing the LVEF as at least 40%. And the echocardiogram, it's an EKG. Yes. I knew that one. Mm -hmm. Ah, good. Then your medication list because they want to make sure that you're on the proper medication also for that. And then, you know, they're getting more strict with all the stuff that you're taking. And, and you drivers out there that have had recent heart attacks, trust me when I say this, it's not a walk in the park to get back in. It's yeah. really not. So, Ruthann, you're going to give them that list again, I'm sure. Right. And guys and gals, make sure you have this stuff. It's like I tell drivers all the time. Anything that you have that hinders you from a trucking job, you should have then in a briefcase if you have proof. For example, truckers that are new, they don't carry their school certificate around. Trucking companies ask for it all the time. Mm -hmm. And then they go, oh, I lost that. Well, go, now you got to go find that. Yeah. So you got, you know, guys that have had accidents mm -hmm. and they say, it wasn't my fault. I wasn't. No, no, get doesn't your matter report. if it was your fault. What does the report say? Well, the report shows, well, do you have the report? Nope. I'm sure we can get it though. Yeah. Guys, obtain this stuff. Keep it. With this heart attack thing, you're going to give them this list. If anybody that has had a heart attack or that knows someone that's had a heart attack, this list is vital if you are going to be a truck driver again professionally and you are going to have to be compliant. I'm telling you right now, it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And uh, I just met a driver earlier today. He, he's having a hard time finding a job because he falsified a accident mm -hmm. on, his, on his application. Once you start falsifying things from heart attacks to accidents, you, you, you cut out the really good jobs. Well, here's the thing. If you have all your proper docs, okay, say, say you, you're, you, you've gone, you got your one-year physical, you're, you're, you're driving a year later, okay, but for whatever reason you change jobs, well, you're still going to have to go through another physical, right? You change jobs, you, your, your physical's getting due, whatever the case might be. That medical examiner that's with that company that's going to now want to make sure that you're up to code or whatever the case might be, and, you know, I know you're not a house or anything like that, but, you know, you still have things that you have to be, quote, up to code. You want to make sure those paperwork are handy because if not, they're going to want to screw around with you half the time. They're going to sit there and say, well, don't you have this? They, they feel as though, first of all, one, drivers use our professional. So they want you to act more professional by having some of this stuff with you. Why create more of a hassle for you by not having your hospital discharge papers? The letter from the cardiologist saying that, hey, he's 100% A-OK -okay to go back to work. The stress test reports, all that stuff is really important because it, it, it stops you from going through more bull that the next uh, medical examiner is going to want to give you because you don't have your proper paperwork. You know, make life easier for yourself. Carry it in your briefcase. Listen, a lot of times we have fun topics and we joke around a lot on the show. This is not, this is, this is a very serious episode. It's, it's as serious as a heart attack, Oh, <laughs> but no, seriously, you like that. You're smiling. Mm. Okay. But anyways, it, it is, it, that's an old saying, serious as a heart attack. Well, you can't get any more serious than a heart attack because there is no playing around. Once you go into a heart attack, you're on the floor dying, okay? I mean, I've met truckers. I met a trucker one time. He was a tanker hauler. He said, I, I was just driving along. I got all sweaty. He said, I, I just, I just for some reason, I just got all sweaty. He said, I, I pulled off the side of the road. He said, just by luck, somebody knew what they're doing, pulled over and asked me if I was all right. And they looked at me and they said, he's having a heart attack. He said, I didn't even feel it. But... Two hours later, they were cracking his chest. Remember? Triple or quadruple bypass. Remember the interview we did with the pink lady? Uh, which pink lady? The one with the pink truck, the pink lady. Um, Chelsea. Yes. Yes. Her, her, her boyfriend. Had a heart attack. On the road. On the road. She had to get him to a hospital. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it happens, and he's young. I mean, it doesn't age. It, heart attacks don't discriminate against your age, your race, your ethnicity, your weight. It really doesn't care you know, who you kids, are. Kids have had heart attacks. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Infants have had heart attacks. It doesn't, it doesn't care anything. It's, it's what's inside. It doesn't see anything else other than what, what your muscle's doing. And you know what? It goes back to one thing when we were talking about the beginning. This, you know, heart attacks are preventive. Not everyone is. Like you said, sometimes it's in the genes. Mm -hmm. There's some people that it doesn't matter. They're going to have a heart attack someday because... Their genes in that section are just that bad. Right. And it's a shame. Okay. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, 
create their heart attacks. And truckers are probably the biggest. Well, it said that it's, it's, it's a higher rate, higher statistics with and that trucker. And, and it's, you guys got to know one thing. It's not stress. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's not stress that's doing it. It's poor health habits. Right. That's exactly. And look, I get it. I'm a trucker. We're all, you know, we're, we're sports people. If we're sitting in front of a TV with a beer in our hand, watching the sport, mm-hmm. most of us are not sportsy. You know, all right. You know, we're not doing, you know, we're not, I played sports myself a little bit. But we're not really on the football team and blah, 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 right? We're the guy hunting in the woods. That's our exercise or fishing. NASCAR. N- NASCAR. It's, Drivers it's, like NASCAR. It's a trucker thing. But the bottom line is the last thing you want to do is be laying on a gurney and having them split your chest down the middle, okay, because you spend the next, you know, and some of you guys, it may be too late. You know, some of you guys are already trucking 30 years. But I would tell you this, I don't think if you're, I think if you're still alive and kicking and you can walk, I don't think it's too late to get up and try it. It's never too late because look at it this way. If you're a driver that's, you know, say you're in it and you're only driving 15 years, right? Say you unknowingly are a higher candidate right then for a heart attack just because of whether it be genetics, whether it be um, the way you're eating, um, whatever the case might be. And you still have young kids at home. I'm going to say young meaning uh, 15 and under. If you're in a heart attack, what's going to happen to your family then because you just got three, four months out of work because you are now recuperating? It's it, There's more to look at it than just, oh, I'm fine. You know, there's so much that you have to look out at for even if you don't, even if your kids are grown, you don't want to, if you truly love to travel and be a driver, why would you want to cut your, your, your time driving short or become early retired because you can't drive anymore because of a heart attack? I remember, I remember I started working out and, and, and getting more athletic after high school. And I remember running to some kids from high school and they're like, oh man, you're nuts. That that shit went away when I get out of high school, man. I don't do any of that anymore. I'm I'm not into that stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, you're going to regret that because the body, the body needs to, the body needs to be worked, man, for the rest of your life. There ain't a time to just sit down and do nothing, guys. Do you remember when we started exercising that one time and we were doing that insanity disc thing yeah and we're like second we just started the second packet and i end up it was your birthday and i end up into the er because i couldn't move (laughs) (laughs) it's like that was insanity yeah (laughs) it was horrible well don't don't scare them thinking (laughs) exercise is going to kill them that was it's called insanity for a reason it was well i also had another issue but still kind of helped it a little bit yeah a little in the loop there but you know what here's the thing and we are on your case by the way if you're listening to me right now we are on your case because we care. Truly, we do care about the trucking industry. We think. Right. I want. I want all drivers to be healthy. I want all drivers to enjoy their 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 time driving. I want, you know, I don't want to see an accident happen and 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 it be because the driver had a heart attack while he was driving because he was unknown to it. Get it checked out. Here's, take care of yourself. Here's the other thing: you start you go in the trucking like I did, one sixty five, one seventy, and a couple of years later you're two forty. You know what? <laughs> Do you think your wife's looking at you the same anymore or vice versa? And people might get insulted over that. But look, let's be honest. I went from medium Troy to extra large. You know, I didn't even recognize myself. And, you know, it's, it's you know, getting unhealthy, honestly, is just bad. All, there's nothing good about it. The worst part is your heart. The other part is it's actually bad for your self-esteem. I, shit, I remember looking in the mirror saying, I, you know, I, I had to buy bigger clothes and all that crap. So I went, I, I was a big guy at one time. I'm not, you know, I can't, you know what I mean? I hope no one's truly getting insulted over this because I, I know what it's like, all right? And it sucks to buy bigger clothes and then think, oh, I don't look bad. Once you got the bigger clothes on, now you got loose-fitting clothes, and then, and you remember I used to eat a box of Fruity Pebbles at, like, midnight, you know, Mm -hmm. in a mashed potato bowl. That was my snack. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just eating so much food. It was insane, and, 
you got to get a grip on yourself. You got to put the food down. You got to stop eating all day long while you're trucking. And you got to get out and you got to exercise. Or I promise you, there's going to come a point where you're going to be forced to do it when all of a sudden you're put on a strict diet by your doctor, your chest has been cracked open, and you're laying down, and people are crying over you. And you know what? I think I think they're getting the picture. Well, here's no here's more. some here's some advice. We're like depressing. This is pod- my advice this, part. I'm going to call this the depressing podcast. That's just you. But it's it's no, it's okay. not me. Well, I'm, I'm not depressing. Ch- 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 no, you're yeah, making things Dr. depressing. Evil. You're a de- That's what I'm going to call you. Ch- Nurse Evil. Ch- okay, some advice. If you are a person that has a smartphone and you like to check Facebook or emails or anything like that, well, most people like to walk and check those things. So, talking to Mike. So, walk around your truck or go for a walk, and all you have to do is watch your phone. Yeah, no, I mean, that's why people listen to music, too. I mean, it helps. Yeah, it does. But, I mean, if you're sitting there, I mean, it's just just don't walk into something. Like, I was going to say. Don't walk into your ICC bumper yeah, and end up having a big gash on your chin yeah, don't or get shin. On, don't get on Talk CDL's videos. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's, that's what somebody true. said once. If you make it to Talk CDL's videos, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's things that you can do. Yes, Walk around, you know, go into, you know, even if it is a matter of going into parking at the furthest spot from a truck stop and walking your way up. We're beating a dead horse. I think we've gone over this. You are a dead horse right now. Well, I'm just telling you, we've, there's a point where you're talking to people and they're going, okay, please shut up. You've said it 50 different ways. I mean, I'm just saying that's what I would feel like. I'm not talking about just you. You roll your eyes at me. It's because you haven't shut up. It's a good pod. You did it. Yeah, it's a very good subject. I was surprised you brought it up. Very good. So you want to wrap this up or what? Hey, no, you know what I want to do? I want you to give the list again, the complete list of everything. Once they've, once they've been uh, released from the hospital, there's a list of things you're going to need, starting with the cardiologist. Everything. Go ahead and give them this list to get back into there's, trucking. There's five things. Remember, five things that you need. Your hospital discharge paper, the clearance from your cardiologist, the stress test report, the echocardiogram, or nuclear testing showing your LVEF is at least 40% in your medication list. Five things. Very important. Discharge papers, clearance from the cardio, stress test, echogram, EKG, and meds. And this is all for a heart attack if that's, you're a trucker. that's You need to take that to the medical examiner to get your next... Med card. There you go, guys and gals. And then keep it. And listen, if anybody, you know, we're always looking for people to interview. We've got lots of interviews we've done, more coming up. If you have any kind of a issue, be a good pod, then that somebody that's had a hard time getting back into trucking, give us a call. Send us a message to Ruth Ann, R-U-T-H-A-N-N, at TalkCDL.com, or you can send me, Troy, at TalkCDL.com. If you have a subject... You've had a problem. The other thing that I would um, um, really would love to interview somebody is somebody that's been in a really tragic accident. Okay, we've, we've had that lady on that was in a head-on collision and killed that 17-year-old girl. Horrible, okay? But, you know, I like to get the stories out because there's a lot of people that listen to Talk CDL, Ruth Ann, that are not truckers. And how many have written into us and said, hey, listen, because of this one subject, I don't do this anymore, or I went and did this, and thank you very much. And so we are trying to, you know, one person at a time, get the message out, track the trailers, dangerous, dangerous industry, and the men and women that do it, unappreciated, but choose to keep going on. And we really want to spread the word about what trucking can do, what it does, the dangers, everything about trucking all the time. Sounds good. We out of here. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord. Attention all truckers, it's Troy with Talk CDL. If you're looking for a new job, try NCI at 844-311-7076. They offer great equipment, great benefits, a great working atmosphere, and more importantly, a great steady income week after week after week. This carrier is actually owned by their own shipper. Pick up the phone if you're interested and call 844 311-7076 311-7076 and never run out of freight again. And tell them Talk CDL sent you.